अच्छा यू स्पोक टू रवि ना ये स्टडे ओके बिकॉज दे हैव नॉट इट गिवन द एक्सेस आल्सो सो मे बी बिकॉज सैटरडे संडे ऑफिस आर क्लोज ना मे बी सो मे बी फ्रॉम टुमोरो वी शुड बी एबल टू गेट द एक्सेस आई विल ऑल्सो आस्क हिम टुडे ओके सो वील जस्ट रन थ्रू वॉट वी डिड ये स्टडे सो मे Uh, how many days? Um, because you know, uh, it will take another eight to ten days at least if you have to rush through. So you want to learn thoroughly? Uh, thoroughly in the sense, uh, the way I am teaching now, na the same, na uh, the same. But Ravi was telling. It only takes ten days, sir. See, we are running through this because uh, uh, I am going to run through all these uh, menu, na. See, for example, uh, where is the menu which we saw yesterday? <laughs> See, administration, na. What I am doing is because when when you log in into SAP, you are going to use all these transaction codes. so i am touching upon all these transaction codes which are important okay so uh, for that e- even if you say for one transaction code if you take at least 4 to 5 minutes so uh, if you take given 10 transactions it will be 50 minutes per day like that but i am concentrating only on the basis transaction codes like that um oh yeah. what is your priority you want to do it very fast or what is i mean uh... no sir if i say now it may take for me 15 days more because they i need to crack one two round one round two so can take slowly also it's okay acha okay no i am taking it with proper this way no for me before 15 or 20 days aha uh-huh. okay okay no uh, see uh, what we'll do is we will keep this interactive you know so that you learn on the way you know otherwise again you will have to revise and so on so but with this you will be comfortable you know uh, whatever in, whatever interview you want to crack na uh, you will be very much comfortable no problem that much i can assure you okay so for example you once you log in into the system this is a standard sap menu and here on this side the small things you know in other trainers will not tell you all the small things so like for example i know uh, each icon also you know like for example this is for uh, cre- creation creation of your favorites you know this is uh, this is this is for uh, this is for creation of favorites Favorites. favorites yeah this is delicious favorites yeah, yeah this is this for is this is for um, authorizations this is okay. your yeah they have given it here on the first menu but this is for this is sap menu and this is the user menu suppose now if you assign few transaction codes to a user now here it is not assigned so this user access whatever is there so if you click on this only um, the t codes which are authorized to the user will be displayed here like that so different menu gets displayed if you click on this is sap menu if you click on this it is user menu like that so in this the entire thing as i said yesterday uh, we are look, going to look we don't need to access all this you know it is not required by us at all even though it is there in our it, it displayed here we don't have access to these modules so you will be accessing tools in tools also there are specific uh, this i explained to you know basically i wanted to show it to you that it is it is vast you know even in material management there are thousands of options inside which are there and again it depends on uh, what are the software components that have been installed so this is the example which we saw for each module you know so for example each functional module has had so many things to do you know for finance module so many options are there compared to that basis has got uh, under tools 
out of that this particular module is only for ABAP. We don't have to use this at all. But some of the T codes out of this we can use. So coming to administration, yesterday we covered the sending of system messages. This is required when you are sending some emergency messages to the users or uh, you want to send some messages to the developers and so on. You know. S, uh, S license is for installing a SAP license or to view the license. SM01 is for the transaction code management. You want to log the transaction codes, etc. SM28 is for installation check. You want to check whether your system is uh, healthy or not. This is usually done one, one when the system is uh, installed for the first time or if you have made, uh, undergone some upgrade or something like that. Okay. Then SICF is, uh, there are many uh, services, HTTP services available in, in an ABAP system using which you can uh, access the system uh, using the browser. So in that case, you need to uh, activate some of the services, then you can do it through SICF. Uh, I will give you one example where, you know, where SICF is used. For example, you got an ABAP program and uh, through which you want to uh, let us say you want to send daily sales figures okay to certain people so what you can do is in that program uh, you will be accessing the bulk url sms wherever you know uh, service provider he will provide you with a url wherein you can send the bulk sms so that particular url can be configured in your in this sicf so that your program will send bulk sms through that url okay so similarly uh, there could be sms's uh, which are uh, being uh, which are inbound and outbound inbound in the sense like uh, like we send message to bank you know saying uh, that okay what is my bank balance so it will, it's a inbound into the server it will access your server and then it will send back what is the bank balance like that so these things for this uh, you, need, you need to activate some services in SICF then uh, SM59 is for RFC destinations this is required when you want to uh, configure transport management or uh, you want to access bolt-on systems or you want to configure some portals which you want to connect to your system or uh, you could have a business warehouse system which you would like to connect to your system so in that case you need to uh, uh, use sm59 to uh, define the rfc connections these two t codes sm54 and sm55 these, these are nothing but uh, just of a utility which is given to uh, maintain the tables txcom and thost okay so depending on your communication or requirement you need to update these two tables okay <clears throat> then uh, we came to uh, ssc4 scc4 that is client maintenance as i said uh, once your system is installed you need to install your own client because uh, it is recommended that instead of directly working in the standard client delivered by sap it is always better to copy that client and work in that client and uh, preserve the original client as it is okay so the uh, that is uh, then what you can do is you can uh, uh, copy the client 001 to say uh, 710 610 depending on what uh, what plan you have okay so there is something called a local copy and uh, something called a remote copy local copy is on on your own server itself and remote copy is uh, let us say uh, you have got one client on uh, uh, one system and another client on another system okay so in that case that becomes a remote copy but that is 99% uh, never used because uh, then it requires a uh, connection to the remote system and uh, as you know another networks uh, in the network uh, capability is not very good then uh, your client copy will fail so it is always recommended that you do a local copy that is uh, that is there then you have uh, scc1 that's a copy transport request 
let us say you want to copy a particular uh, transport uh, request between uh, let us say uh, client 510 to uh, 610 so transport request if you can do it across two clients for example you have made some change in client uh, say 100 okay and you want to make the same changes uh, or so uh, for example you want to make uh, those changes active in say client 510 then what you can do is you can use scc1 to transport that request from client 100 to 510 then uh, another what we saw was scc5 this is deletion of clients this has to be done with uh, full knowledge because the deletion of client is whatever data is under it everything will get deleted so uh, deletion of client you have to do it with proper approval and so on then uh, uh, we saw scc8 that is client export client export is uh, let us say you have got a system or uh, uh, let us say 610 is your client and uh, you will you would like to export that then once you export it, what it does is it creates transport request. Like I said, transport request is nothing but a container which contains all the related data. Okay. So that transport request, you can take it to another system itself. Maybe that system is not in your uh, uh, in your premises at all. It is somewhere else in some training or kind of a thing. You know? So you can send a transport request and uh, import it in that system so that is why uh, client export is used client import is whatever transport request you have received that you will be uh, using it to import it into the system which you where you want like to import that uh, client okay now scc3 scc3 is for copy logs copy logs in the sense you are doing all these activities uh, like local copy, remote copy, uh, deletion of clients, uh, client export, import, etc. So, so whatever activity you are doing, you can view the logs in this particular transaction code. So that is copy logs. Okay. <clears throat> then we saw SCU03 cross system viewer. SCU0 is you know, uh, let us say you are going to customizing in client uh, 510 and uh, you have got your original client say 001 now sometimes what happens is you would like to check what changes you have made in your client compared to what was delivered by sap so if you want to do that then uh, you can do this is a cross system viewer which is available which you can uh, check it either on the same system or on a remote system let us say you would like to check it on your uh, development system and you are on a production system so cross system viewer in the sense then you will check customizing that is available on your production system uh, vis a vis your development system like that object comparison is uh, comparing objects like for, for example you could have some table you know uh, say table is say t001 i'm just giving example t001 you would like to compare this table with uh, basically table is again an object you would like to compare this with uh, the object in say development system or quality system uh, so you can uh, use these uh, t codes for comparison so these are all customizing objects so customizing you uh, related whatever you would like to check you can do it here okay then uh, we saw what is smlt is uh, language administration like um, by default english and dutch languages are installed and in addition if you would like to install additional languages then you can uh, do that here okay then we saw us mm this is system measurement uh, how to you know this is related to your uh, sap user uh, license management so how uh, users are classified that is what we see here then comes license admin and then data archiving so this we will see uh, in detail today okay so this was in detail is uh, we saw how to send the messages and etc whatever messages you have, you have sent you can always archive it also so that if you would like to refer it 
then those archive messages can be uh, seen. These are the SAP licenses which are installed and how to install. So that we saw. Here is the link uh, which the customer gets where he can access the portal to download the SAP license. Okay. So this we saw how to install a license. Whatever license has been uh, downloaded, this is the way you upload it. <coughs> SM01, this, they are not given an authorization for this, but this is, uh, this is not, uh, this is just for locking and unlocking of transaction codes. Nothing in this, just locking and unlocking. Okay. This we saw uh, installation check. There is a T code called SICK and SM28. SICF, we saw these are the different uh, HTTP services which you need to activate it on. This is to be activated only if it is required. Uh, some of the services uh, while installing, those are already activated by SAP. But if you would like to uh, activate it, uh, you need to uh, discuss with the programmer or if there is a SAP tech note, you need to refer that and then only activate it. Uh, like I said, RFC destinations, you would like to connect your uh, SAP, additional SAP servers or your uh, additional um, BIW or business warehousing servers or your uh, uh, some bolt-on systems, then you will require all these RFCs which you need to be uh, created here. Or for example, you would uh, like to access uh, some of the the remote banking servers you know where there is encryption scripts to be running which are running then uh, you need to define them here so uh, for that you will get the documentation how it is to be uh, defined etc for example uh, for banking if it is required then the bank will tell you how the rfc is to be uh, created okay so we don't have to worry about uh, how to create that rfc so all those details because those details need to be provided by the administrator of that system. Suppose you want to connect to XYZ system. Then that XYZ system administrator has to give you the details. But if you are the administrator of that XYZ system, then you yourself know it. What are the details? Okay. Like that. These are just uh, SM54 and 55 are just used for maintaining a table. Okay. So this, this depends again on uh, some tech nodes or uh, you know your requirement then only these need to be maintained otherwise and there is 99 percent you don't have to touch these tables also unless you know, it is required. Then coming to these are the client, uh, you have to see the client settings so in this client which they have given. So you yeah, like we saw what is the whenever you are creating a client you need to give all these details what is a, a logical system what is the role of that client etc um, whether you want to um, record whatever changes are made in this trans uh, this thing, the client do you want to record them so if you want uh, so these options are there cross client object changes okay <clears throat> whether cross client object changes should be allowed or not allowed. So this is protection. For example, you are importing some uh, client, then uh, protection. Uh, if there is no restriction, what will happen is it will override that client. So you need to protect this particular client if it is a production client. These are all uh, computer-aided uh, test tools. You know that's called CAT. So if you have already got some test tools, these this is basically done by the functional team and the ABAP team. So th if they have got those uh, test tools whether to allow them to uh, run those test tools etc so th th that kind of restrictions are available here then how to create a new client so when you click on this change now no, there is one this, this particular button change display so if you click on that what happens is uh, you will get a new button which comes up here new entries so with new entries you will New entries is nothing but this kind of a screen wherein you will enter the client number, description, city, etc., logical system, etc., and all these 
uh, options you will select it as per your requirement so you will be creating a new client and save it and then you will go ahead with the um, uh, client copy for example you have created now uh, say 900 client and you want to copy from uh, uh, 001 so client copy uh, it will ask you how it is uh, the what is the source what is the target etc so that we will see it today so i'll just start with uh, today's okay this is no oh, yeah this is today's yeah client maintenance so client maintenance we stopped so client maintenance okay uh, <coughs> in client maintenance uh, when you go to client maintenance you will find this particular screen I have taken this from another system which I had so uh, this is the screen which is displayed it has got only two clients out of that if you click on change uh, like I said if you click on this it will this button will come up otherwise uh, you know you will wonder where is my how to create it you know so what they have done is when you once you click on change then only this button comes up new entries and on new entries you will then start entering all the details that you would like to enter okay and uh, once that is created there is something called you, then you will go for client copy now your client copy is a uh, sccl okay you will be executing a transaction code called sccl okay sccl once you execute it now now what has happened is uh, there is a new tool which is available instead of sccl it is sccl n n in the sense new so when the old t code is available and also it will display you which is the new transaction code okay so it will say okay now proceed with the new transaction code this is the old transaction code which is displayed here <coughs> now let us say the in client copy uh, your target client is 400 uh, or it should be uh, say 500 your uh, selected profile in the sense see there are whenever you are doing a client copy uh, it comes with different profiles whether you want to copy all the data whether you want to copy only the um, uh, let us say only the customizing uh, whether you want to copy only the profiles whether you want to copy only the master data see transaction data is not copied because it is uh, the the volume is too high so there are different profiles which are available here you need to select that profile okay <coughs> then once that profile is selected then you need to select the source client so this target client uh, you have selected then you have to select the source client now you you can also select the masters from another source uh, source client uh, user masters from where you would like to pick up the masters so that also you can sell give it here so depending on that you can do that then you have got uh, you can do a test run because many times what happens you will start a client copy and uh, after because it takes a lot of time let us say it takes uh, 8 to 10 hours so after 10 hours you will realize that okay it has failed so it is always better to run the test run so with all these settings you can do a test run so with test run you will come to know that whatever you have selected all the accesses etc are okay and the, uh, the client copy is running properly okay so uh, let us go to sccl1 so in sccl1 options are similar only only the screen format has changed so this here you will enter the source client here here you will enter the target client okay then uh, these are the client copy profiles which i said you know uh, which are the uh, profiles you would like to select so there are many many number of profiles which are there like i said you want only customizing you want only uh, authorization so those that specific uh, profile you need to select it here then uh, another is uh, uh, you want let us say in a in a client copy you, they have given, given this additional option of table selection you want to select specific tables only from a particular client into this client so you can do that 
packages in the sense what happens is for example sales and distribution uh, it has got a separate package in under that uh, whatever tables are there even you can do that so different packages if you want you can select those packages here again uh, different processing options have been given here in the new transaction code SCCLN wherein you can do a test mode lock source client because when uh, see why to lock source client because no one should be able to make any changes there once this process starts okay <coughs> then uh, failed exits failed tables so you talk it in the sense just ignore those and go ahead like that uh, use exclusive locks split large tables because there are also sometimes the tables are too big you know about say 35 gb 40 gb etc so what it does is uh, it splits those tables and then uh, uh, processes them for example 35 gb tables are there so it will split it into say 55 gb uh, and it will do parallel processing so so you will uh, the number of parallel processes you need to define it here like that so that is local client copy now we'll see the different uh, like we were, uh, it is asking for uh, cl uh, client copy profile so these are the different profiles which are available like for example i said sap all all client specific data without change documents sap appl only application data without the same so for example uh, sap customizing uh, sap customizing with user variants so these are different um, um, uh, you can say SAP profile used for client copy. So you need to select which is uh, which which is the best option or what is the requirement and which profile comes close to it. Okay. For example, history here SAP underscore UC SV customizing user master records and variants. So um, if you would like to also transfer the users because for example you are creating a uh, client say 910 and in 910 you are when you are creating this particular uh, client uh, you should not expect uh, administrator to start creating all the users let us say there are 500 users to be created so um, while creating the client itself what you can do is you can use this particular profile uh, do the client copy so that you will get the customizing also and the masters also master data user master data so uh, as a basis administrator you don't have to create them because every user creation you will find that uh, even that uh, creation of users is also a big process so you have to also consider how much time you and your team are going to uh, be uh, using on a new client because when you are whenever you create a new client uh, the functional team all the users will say we want uh, users to be created on this so you should ask what you want to do in this client whether you want the users to be there whether uh, a specific um, uh, data to be there customizing to be there etc so you need to discuss that uh, then another is uh, so these basically these are the uh, for example this particular this thing user without authorization profiles and roles so they will say we want a user but he should not have any authorization we will give new authorizations okay if you take this particular profile it is user records and authorization profile so all the user master records and authorization profiles will come to that client so this is uh, this you need to decide which uh, SAP profile you want to use it while client copy okay now um, there are different options which are available you can schedule it as a background job or you can start it immediately etc so these are the options which are available i think it's there in the beginning also direct execution execute as a task list etc okay so this is again source client task uh, suppose you have selected this profile then it will ask you for uh, these two details from where you want to pick up the source masters and from where you would like to pref uh, pick up the authorizations etc now this is a, rem a remote client copy see in remote you will find that it is asking for source destination okay so this is the rfc destination which has been configured so we will come to that in the new transaction code 
SCC 9. Instead of SCC 9, it is now SCC 9N. Okay, because it's a new this thing. So you will have uh, the clients. So this is your source client, RFC destination, and the target client. So you are on a uh, diff different uh, server. Okay, and uh, your source is on a different server. And but you are connected through this system uh, using a RFC destination call. Okay, so this is where uh, you will be using transaction code SM59 to define your RFC connection to the uh, source uh, client. Or okay, so that definition uh, will have to be put here, and then your target client is here. Again, same thing. You will be use uh, like we did local copy. It is the same. Same options are available here for uh, client copy so that you can uh, select which profile you want to do it and then other things are standard uh, whatever you are doing in local same is available in uh, uh, report okay then uh, same as i said number of parallel processes if you are going to split the table etc then it will come here this is a remote copy SCC9 instead of SCC9 it is now SCC9N okay so you don't have to you know honestly remember all these T codes or you can basically you should know the concept you know that okay these facilities are available in SAP so uh, once you access then uh, it's uh, it's easy now SCC1 like a uh, copy transport request now client copy uh, by transport request now if you want to this is not usually done because uh, the transport request if you look at the size of the data it is uh, sometimes too large so there is no point creating a transport request but since it's there we'll see the option so this uh, this is your uh, uh, source client uh, where you will give it and what is the transport request number okay again there is option of a test run etc so we will see the new transaction code scc1 so this is your target client and uh, target request okay where you want to uh, that particular transport request get, has to get imported there okay again here also you will find uh, the profile to be selected okay uh, no, we are into client. This is transport request, right? So here, whatever is there, you will you know, when you give a ta the target client, then on the transport request, it, it will get basically there are two things. One is the export part, client export. Uh, here again, you will have to select the profile and the target system. System in the sense here, you will have to give the system ID. For example, if it is. Uh, uh, CMP, CGD, whatever you know. So that, that system ID you will have to give it. So it will create a um, uh, export transport request. Uh, it will be created, and then trans that transport request once uh, it is created, then we you will have to import that. So this is client uh, export which is uh, given here. So you give all these details. You know, like it is similar to uh, uh, local client copy and remote client copy. Because basically what we are doing is instead of uh, directly updating in the systems, we are creating a transport request. Okay. So this transport request is nothing but a container which contains all the data. For example, uh, you are uh, um, uh, exporting the data with say the profile as a customizing and user master. So what happens is this transport request is getting created with user masters and the customizing tables. So it contains, this, this is nothing but a file which contains all this data and then that file is again sent to a system, maybe that system is not available in your company or, or uh, you need to send it to your let us say um, uh, a training uh, server which is located elsewhere. So you can tra send this transport there and then it can get imported into that system. So uh, again, uh, you got the options of uh, direct selection or direct execution or uh, you know uh, do it uh, by a background program. Then again, you got the uh, option.
option of parallel processing so that you, the entire process gets speed it speeds up and uh, completes fast because you always have uh, large tables in your client source client basically then uh, client import is again uh, in import nothing you have to do you have to you have to log into the system where you would like to uh, import that uh, transport request so there you will have to give the transport request uh, number which is uh, communicated to you okay so the new transaction code is scc7n okay so this is where you will give the transport uh, request number again it has to be located like uh, we, we saw the file system zero uh, if you recollect the file system this was used for uh, so this this is the uh, this is where you will have to uh, put the transport request then only it will get available here okay so once you have a pull down here it will show you that okay this transport request is available for import like that so using that you can again in addition to this you have got other options uh, which you need to give it here Profile, source system, source client, all these details you need to give, and then again start it. Okay, direct execution or uh, execute as a task list. Okay, so it will uh, uh, do the entire process and it will get imported into the target client. Now this is like I said, uh, this is the um, tool for uh, <coughs> whatever you know your the whatever client uh, copies you have done you will get uh, the details of the logs here whether uh, what profile you use whether it is finished or you know there were any errors so you can check everything here okay now they have given it in uh, they have bifurcated it this client overview client or uh, timeline etc earlier uh, versions of uh, these details were not available everything used to come in one log only local copy remote copy everything used to come in one only so now they have uh, bifurcated this so you can uh, check you know if you have uh, executed a remote copy then you can click on this and then know it okay now scu0 is uh, you want to do uh, the comparison okay so suppose you want to compare data from one client with data in another client but that is related only to your customizing objects not uh, the actual data but customizing customizing in the sense what happens is sap when it is delivering the standard clients it delivers with uh, the standard customizing or the best uh, practices which are followed in the world so uh, then using that standard uh, customizing we customize our own uh, manufacturing units our own uh, you know basically we uh, use that template to customize our processes okay but what many times what happens uh, due to some uh, some customizing problems or issues which you need to troubleshoot you need to check whether that uh, whatever has been delivered by sap is uh, uh, is uh, is is the same or have we made any changes etc or you would like to just have a check with your quality system or your development system then you can use this utility for checking that okay so now uh, let us say you got uh, your project img this is nothing but a customizing tree uh, you would like to check this with uh, you want to do a new comparison or this thing so those uh, details you need to enter it here what you would like to uh, which components you would like to select etc so those things uh, you need to select and then compare it so it will give you a list of uh, you know uh, objects which are uh, matching and which are not matching so that is a list which will provide you know suppose in this clients uh, in uh, uh, in a particular uh, area you have uh, created let's say a sales area as xyz and uh, same definition in your development system is something else then uh, it will uh, highlight that and then this will help you to you know uh, make the required uh, changes in your customizing so this is mostly used by the customizing team 
but you should be aware of this suppose uh, they approach you then you should be able to uh, at least you should know that okay conceptually this is available where you can check okay so these are all the details which are there which you can use suppose you want to uh, uh, view a particular table then you can uh, give the table name here suppose uh, like i said t001 this is a customizing table you can give that t001 and uh, connection as i said this is your rfc connection to the server where you would like to connect and check for example t001 uh, the in this client and t001 in another client okay so you can uh, connect that uh, it will connect internally and then tell you what is matching and what is not matching okay so these are all some uh, you want to do a background execution etc so these are the just uh, options which are available to you then uh, coming to language management language management is like i said uh, by default they install german and english okay but in addition to that if you would like to install additional languages then you can do that also so this is one uh, this is where you click on language and then uh, but you should have the software downloaded from the sap marketplace okay Uh, many people don't do this right they don't change language from english to some other things right no it depends again on your you know the it depends on the usage for example in our uh, our company uh, we were using uh, because we had uh, offices in sweden and spain etc so we had the swedish language and the spanish language installed like that so it depends uh, on the so, so we don't know or some other languages how can we do that with this one so no see what happens is you will be using uh, like i showed you the first screen wherever you are logging on into the system now uh, the sap gui for example i'll just run it here and show you Now, there is unnecessary. We have to again do everything. Now, start everything. So, this is comparison which we saw. <coughs> Now, there is uh, this is a uh, 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 this is a large topic, you know. This is USMM. So, we'll uh, try to finish whatever is possible. see this uh, usmm is basically user uh, management user system measurement is basically for you know uh, whatever uh, agreement you have done with sap and uh, as per that uh, you are supposed to use the uh, sap login ids okay let us say you have purchased uh, sap license for say 5000 users then you need to use them as as per the agreement okay and then you it you have to self audit and then send the data to sap so here uh, as a basis administrator you need to classify each of the users properly so that uh, they are as per the uh, agreement which you have uh, done with sap so uh, this is this these are the different system measurement settings which are available here again uh, if you would like to have more details on this this is the um, uh, link where you can go there and check all the details but again for this uh, you require their uh, customer id and uh, password so so more details are available here so in this i will just briefly go through all these options okay one is uh, the client clients in the sense <coughs> like i said there you will have a development client client quality client etc etc the sap is only interested in the uh, the production client because that is where uh, for uh, they are not going to uh, audit your uh, quality or your development or uh, your test system you can have any number of users there they are not going to uh, ask you for that data okay but for production system they are going to ask you what are the number of users that you are using what are their class how are they classified 
and is it as per their uh, agreement with them okay so clients here means uh, basically the production client okay price price list is again uh, what are what, what is the price list at which you have purchased this so these price list are available in the agreement which you have okay so whenever you are buying a sap license from sap uh, there is a, a agreement along with your company so that agreement copy uh, you should ask your boss that okay i would like to have the agreement copy so that uh, for it will help you in this licensing then uh, comes the third option of user types there are different types of users for example you will have your uh, functional team who is just doing customizing kind of a thing so but they are professional you can call them they are professional users now there there will be some guy who is sitting in the go down he is not doing much of uh, he is not using much of sap you know so he could be a worker login uh, there could be uh, your uh, there are bosses who will be doing just approval kind of a thing you know like purchase order approval or sales order approval and kind of thing so that user type is different you can say they are limited professional then the fourth option is uh, uh, define the email email in this is so whatever the sap license data is there that you would like to send it to the uh, sap license auditor so you will be defining his email address here then uh, define rfc destination for a law law central uh, law central in sense uh, see you could have uh, five six production system one could be for bw one could be for some say net beaver one could be for say bpc okay and for all this you would like to consolidate uh, all the mm, licensing data into a single uh, license uh, system usually this license system is uh, the solution manager system so for that you need to define a rfc destination so rfc destination is as i said earlier you need to define where it is located basically through the ip address or with what what uh, login id and password you want to log into that system etc so that rfc destination again you will have to define it using sm59 so uh, sm through sm59 you define that rfc destination and then here you have to give that destination name the next option is define parameters for history administration for example you for how many days you would like to retain this user um uh, major uh, system measurement for how long you would like to retain it in the system that you can do it and the last option is a role based classification now if you know each of the users then uh, uh, you can classify them uh, as per that or then there is something called role based classification uh, role based in the sense let us say you have got a uh, stores user or uh, let us say you have got a uh, department head Yeah, or you have got uh, the, your CEO of the company, or you have got functional team. So depending on the roles, now this comes under the security part. The kind of roles assigned to each of the users, you can do the system measurement. Okay. Again, in the uh, the last option is rule based classification. Rule based in the sense uh, you could have your own uh, rules defined to classify these users. so it could be authorizations it could be roles it could be you know so the, <clears throat> that way you three or four options they have provided so using those uh, parameters you can define your own rules also and depending on that you can classify your users okay now the last option is transport rules so let us say you have defined all these rules in a particular system and uh, you would like to use the same rules in another system so you can transport these rules there because there is no point again creating these rules in another system so what you can do is you can transport this again this gets transported using a transport request or a flat file is created which you can upload it there and uh, import it there and use it okay so these are broadly um, uh, the entire process which it goes through so what we'll do is uh, we'll see how the client is selected so these are the options which we saw okay 
now here um, which which clients would you like to measure because you could have 100 clients out of that only one of them is your production client that means uh, uh, so that what you can do is once you click on this um, clients uh, option it will show you which are the clients so here you need to include including this is you need to test it here you know uh, uh, che uh, che the checkbox are there you need to just check uh, include them in the measurement then comes uh, the price list what are the price lists which you would like to uh, apply for this measurement so depending on again this you need to check with your uh, the agreement copy which you have signed with sap so you will get those details the price list details you will get it in that agreement so depending on that you need to act, uh, check this particular checkbox okay otherwise your measurement will go wrong okay just a minute huh? <coughs> so client you have selected you have selected the price list then coming down like we were talking about user types what are the different types of users because in a in a company you will have different types of users now, at the gate you will find a security guy sitting there he is also doing something in SAP, but he is not utilizing the entire this thing. You know, he is just doing whatever um, material is coming inside. He is just entering that. I mean, when I assign the roles, right? No, not the roles. I mean, something like security guard ko itna tak permission dena, uh, toda upar wala ko itna. Ha, wo to. So, so that that is the way the user type is defined. Because he is gate pe bata hai, so he doesn't require uh, authorization of a manager. He requires limited authorization. So he he could be defined as a uh, you know worker type, you know. Okay. Or uh, if if he's a manager, then he becomes uh, he will have a uh, limited professional kind of a user. But if he's a MD, then he is a professional like that. Okay. So the example. Security guard, only he needs. He, we should give his authorization only to check the invoices. Correct, or to uh, receive the material. Okay, yes. because he is counting now how much material has been received and so on. Okay, so so that limited authorization you have to give it there. So we'll see the different user types which are available. See, so these are the there are many user types which are available. And uh, again, you have to, uh, there's a the printed copy of the agreement, you have to see what is there. For example, I said operational. Operational in the sense only is an operational user or information. If there, there could be a user who is just going to display data. He is not going to make any changes. So that you have to do it. Uh, for example, requisitions and confirmation. Whatever material is coming inside the gate of a factory so he you will classify him as requisition and confirmation then you will have only basis so you let us say uh, you have got a team of say 15 basis people so you will classify all those users with basis okay development workbench for example you have got developers uh, say five or six abap developers so you will say development okay uh, you have got people from hr like that so here you will have to define all those okay now here you will find special module types etc so special module is you know <coughs> for example this special module in special module you can make the change these are all grayed out these are given by sap only but here you can define your own user type also okay we can write our own yeah sentence. yeah yeah you can write here and then but this should be as per your agreement. For example, this you have taken additional um, component of say uh, business consolidation in uh, um, there is some module called BPC, you know, business process consolidation. And uh, for that, if you have purchased a license of say 50 users, then you can define them here like that. So these are special module types which you can do, uh, which you are free to use. Wherever it is gray, we cannot touch them. See, wherever it is gray, it is given by SAP. Only thing is you can either include them or not include them, like that. Okay, so this is the user type. 
then uh, next one is pardon no uh, no can you repeat i just missed what you said special module hamare humko client kitna i mean hamara i mean a company says how many people how many special things we want and they will order it right ha ah, yeah see um, that that agreement uh, when they are when you are buying the sap license at that time only it is discussed with them what kind of um, users we would like to have for example uh, you want to do uh, business process consolidation then uh, you will tell them that okay i want this okay so sorry to ask this one of my when i worked as intern one of my trainee used to have a hard disk uh huh okay we used to have every solution of sap basis in it. used to have every solution it's almost of 2 tb or something like that acha uske sath sab kuch hota tha every question for every answer for question where can we find something like that mm at least uh, any name for it because i have never seen something like this उसके पास एक हार्डवेयर में हर एक प्रॉब्लम को एक आंसर होता था अच्छा अच्छा नहीं सी व्हाट हैपेंस आई विल टेल यू सी इफ यू नो एवरीथिंग देन यू डोंट हैव टू सर्च इन दैट डिस्क एट ऑल एंड अनदर थिंग इज आई विल टेल यू आई जस्ट गो टू दिस I'll just show you about that website. You have seen help dot sap dot com. Help dot sap dot com. No sir, not uh-huh. at all. No. So I'll just show you that site. Okay. One minute. You go to this site now. Help dot sap dot com. Okay. You will get anything you want. You know, it's too vast. and if you ask my personal experience everything sap is given here for any product okay see if you go here now you will get everything see sap documentation by product you can browse by product uh, these are the learning journeys and there is one portal called uh, open sap i will just show you that also Uh, is it open dot sap or open sap dot com? See, open sap. See, these are all online courses given by SAP. Okay, so you can use this also. You can. Uh, no, no, there are free courses. So some of them uh, uh, you need to pay, but there are courses which are free. I have not gone entirely through this, but. Uh, since you are a student i would like to say yeah, i am i think you should go through this so these are all see here join this free online course to get an introduction to this so this will uh, really help you so it's not only sap but whatever is related to sap they have given it as there are some free courses but it's good now since you asked me and these are too vast for example sap if you see this now by pro, by product you will get all the details all the details because my uh, personally i have never referred to any uh, like your friend is, is saying now like uh, disk or something uh, i have always uh, relied on help.sap.com and uh, the support portal which is there now for example service.sap.com so for this you require a id but okay at least we can see the first page so it will take you to support.sap.com <coughs> so this is the this is the portal which is there but to access some of the like if you want to access this then it will ask you for a login id and password okay so here you will get everything you know so if you 
to go here everything is there whatever problems you are getting because once once you are uh, working as a sap basis administrator you will have access to all this and there are like uh, like uh, here you will uh, you, the knowledge base articles are there okay so these are knowledge base articles they are nothing but sap notes and they have got their own community so you can go here there are a lot of things which you can access and you can get your solutions okay there are many you today you can just go through it you will get the okay where was i kidhar gaya mera okay so special modules okay then uh, define the email the whatever your sap license auditor na he will uh, communicate to you uh, where you should send the data so that email address you need to uh, put it here <coughs> then th this is like i was telling you the rfc destination of the law central system suppose you got 5 6 production system then you need to consolidate uh, all the users into a single system so rfc destination that has to be defined here then uh, coming to the history for how many uh, for how many days you would like to you know retain this data that is only retention because you if you would like to refer it then you can keep that then coming to role based depending on the roles assigned to the users so here it will show you role based so uh, these are the standard sap roles which are there so but you could also have your own roles which are uh, assigned to users so you can select them here okay so depending on those roles uh, you can uh, classify your users so uh, you will have to uh, you, you will have a standard policy in place where uh, you will uh, decide how to classify these roles okay then there is something called rules based uh, authorizations uh, uh, sorry rules based uh, classification so in this uh, you need to have you will define the rules uh, based on uh, rules you will have to decide along with your boss what should how do we classify this okay so this will be the uh, as per your authorizations or roles and so on you know like what application they are accessing etc so you can define those rules here let us say you have defined these rules there there could be 500 600 whatever rules and the same rules you don't want to you know um, define it in another system you would like to uh, transport it so that facility is also given to you so uh, rules could be depending on authorizations roles user attributes and applications okay so you can define your own rules and based on these rules then you do, you will have to classify the users like that okay you want to transport these rules to another system so this facility they have given that you can transport this to another uh, system and then this is export and import what uh, how to do that earlier there was a transaction code called uh, law now it is uh, it is uh, no longer supported now they there is a t code called s law 2 so s law 2 is nothing but you know it's a consolidation software wherein it will collect all the data from the other uh, other systems and then it will uh, throw out a result saying that okay these are the number of professional users these are the number of uh, un, uh, 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 limited professional users these are the worker users these are the hr users etc so that is for consolidation there is a big topic of archiving uh, i am not much familiar with this and this is mostly used by you know uh, the functional team this is used uh, when your data base size is uh, uh, too high you know like let's say it's about uh, 10 12 15 tb and you would like to delete some of the data 
and uh, move that data to a uh, file server so okay. so in that case uh, you can use this uh, archiving but now sap has come up with uh, its own archiving tools so so that's uh, where it will reduce uh, because what happens you know uh, since uh, uh, every day data is getting added to the production system you need to in increase your storage space and storage space uh, as you know is uh, very costly so because now most of the servers are located in data centers so these uh, data centers make lot of money out of that so and what our managers uh, our seniors will say you how can you re reduce the size of the database so one way is to archive the data whatever data is not required you want to archive it so archiving uh, solutions are there there is one solution by sap called open text so wherein it will uh, delete the data which is not required and put it to a file server or uh, you know um, other media which is available <coughs> this is uh, for the application code pages etc but uh, usually you don't need to touch this at all because uh, this is a setup uh, when we install the system unless there is some you know tech note which says okay you need to modify uh, these uh, code pages etc if something is not working only then you will come here otherwise uh, it's not required now um, in the next tomorrow what we'll be doing is uh, basically we'll be exploring uh, this particular area system monitoring and uh, the uh, update etc so so this is all for today so tomorrow we'll be doing all this so if you have any questions you can ask her So when are we going to learn how to back up this thing? Daily rules. Uh, back up of the database uh, of this uh, system. Yes, sir. Acha. <coughs> so basically, what I am doing is I am following this sequence. But if you are, uh, if you, uh, I can take up backup before also. You want me to take up the backup uh, this thing? I can take that up first. So in your, your, your startup, just as I. No, no, no problem. No problem. Uh, I will show you that also. That is not a problem. Okay, sir. Sir, please speak with Mr. Ravi Kant sir and ask him to solve the issue. Yeah, yeah, I talked.